the U.S. Federal Reserve's balance sheet expanded by some $297 billion in less than a week. Some are saying that this is a new form of quantitative easing, but other market observers have been a little more specific about how quantitative easing works and say that it's not. The distinction for some seems to be around whether or not the purpose is to stimulate the economy as opposed to keeping troubled banks afloat. But personally, I don't find those arguments persuasive. Money is fungible. And when you allow banks that have taken losses uh, that are not yet recognized to then pull liquidity back from those losses by having a bank lending facility like the Fed opened that will give you face value, even if the market value is significantly lower, that feels like that's unlocking liquidity to me, which is basically what quantitative easing does. Uh, David, I know you and I a lot of times don't agree on economic issues. I'll kick this over to you. What do you think here? No, I, I, I totally agree with you on this one. And I was a little <laughs> surprised to see you um, taking this taking this story on to even associate your name with it, uh, because I think that the, the, the distinction between QE and a bailout and a backstop and like free loan money is just totally academic. I mean, the fact that you're basically getting I mean, you're getting QE after the fact, essentially here. Um, I mean, you're getting your assets bought up by the Fed. Now, to be fair, the, the loans are only one year duration. So that is a genuine limitation on the liquidity being provided here. Uh, although, uh, I'm uh, Adam, I'll let you jump in if you want to correct me on that one. Well, I mean, I'll just say that, that right now the term is one year for now, right? The Fed doesn't have any economic motivations. True. The Fed's motivation is stability. So if we get a year from now and these things are still underwater, what are the chances that the Fed lets the banking system go under because they don't want to extend for another year? No, they're going to kick the can. That's the entire game here. But back mm. to you. I do not like that, but you are correct. Um, but at least, you know, there's a fig leaf, okay? Let's put it that way. Um, and, and, and at least there's like some signal of restraint. Um, I mean, obviously, we saw these venture capitalists acting like absolute infants over the weekend, last weekend, um, demanding their treats, and they got them. Um, and that will probably continue to happen. That's just how the system works now. And uh, I'm sure somebody smarter than me can explain how that ultimately ultimately devolves to the American taxpayer shouldering risk from billionaires. And uh, perhaps we have that person here with us today. Adam. <laughs> I'm not going to explain that part, but I will say that, um, you know, that, that one of the things I think that we did not know going into the weekend that we now know coming out of the weekend, uh, and this is not an original thought for myself, but it's one that struck me, is that like enough people who have a loud enough voice yelling that there will be a crisis is actually enough at this point to catalyze a crisis response from the federal government, which then makes mm -hmm. it so that it turns into a real crisis because the federal government has intervened in order to bail them out. So that honestly is a terrifying dynamic to me because effectively you're talking about bailout by influence or whining. And I mean, like, mm -hmm. if that's our metric for what it takes to get federal government banking intervention at this point, then we are done. Zach, I appreciate we've dominated this conversation. Let's kick it over to you for some thoughts. I've been enjoying it. I don't have a ton to add. I mean, I think for like the crypto degens out there, QE equals buy now because Bitcoin going up. Is that right? Is that sort of the general expectation? Bitcoin thrived in a period of quantitative easing when money was cheap and people were looking to park it somewhere. So I think for the crypto Twitter set, maybe it's just as simple as that. But I don't know. Adam, what do you think? I mean, Bitcoin is a cork, right? Like Bitcoin literally floats with whatever the monetary policy environment is. So if the tide is going out, then it's bad for Bitcoin. And if the tide is coming in, then it's good for Bitcoin. And I think that irrespective of whether we call this quantitative easing or not, the idea that the central bank is going to tighten liquidity provisioning by actually selling some of their balance sheet back into the market, that's a dead letter at this point. That is not going to happen. I think we've seen something like $500 billion worth of inflows so far over the last month. That's $300 billion number, that was a week. <laughs> and that was not even the last half of this week as all of these crises have continued to just sort of boil under the surface in like soft form. So yeah, it's, it's wild.